MeshDraw is a new free geometry nodes node graph that lets you draw meshes along curves. Any mesh can be instanced, warped, and stretched along each spline of a curve. The goal was to make a geometry nodes tool that's not specific to making one thing, but it's rather its more general purpose. By warping meshes instead of generating them, you have more control over your triangle count and your UV mapping and you still get to enjoy some of the benefits of a more procedural workflow. So we'll start out with the basic overview. Ah, oh, shoot. Get. Go on now, get. Sorry about that. Uh, as I was saying, any mesh can be used, but it does have to range between 0 to 1 on the y-axis. Although, actually, it ranges 0 to negative 1. That's a blender thing. Don't blame me for that. And technically, you should have a little bit of padding on either side, so it never actually reaches 0 or negative 1. Okay, let me turn on the rest of these meshes, and you can see they're all on top of one another, but if we were to spread them all out, you can see that they look something like that. First thing you do is you want to assign the collection uh, to the mesh drawer. And you can see immediately that it's stretching out the model along the curve. And so I'm going to come in here and I'm going to draw out several curves. Uh, I'm going to vary up the sizes a little bit just to give us something to, to work with here. And the first setting I want to show you is random pick. So it will randomly pick which model from the collection. The next thing is scale overall. So you can see it's scaling each curve and scale by length. It's on by default and it helps keep the proportions. You can also scale individual points along the curves and twist them as well. There's an overall twist that will twist all the strokes evenly. And there's also a random twist. I admit this is not the best model for this, but you can see that each one individually is twisting by random amount. Now I'm going to just run through a few examples. Uh, here's the first brush set that I'm going to use for doing kind of an environment uh, build out. You can see I'm kind of drawing in strokes and smoothing them out, tweaking the points moving the entire curve as needed to try to get the look that I'm going for, stacking them on top of each other and, and that sort of thing. And now I switched over to the, br uh, the bridge brush and I can start sketching in bridges however I want to, adjusting the twist and everything to try to get it to look just right. And so lastly I switched over and now I'm painting in reeds and I can just kind of sketch those in anywhere I want them to be. Here's the brush set I'm going to use to add a few animals to the scene. And once again, I can start from the surface of the water and just draw up strokes, um, move them around, can adjust the points, smooth things out, add a little twist. Uh, this is sticking to the surface of the water, the way I have the settings. Here's a brush that I made for making scales. And see, I can kind of draw these things on and again, have it set in surface mode so they stick to the surface. And I basically can just kind of sketch them on using the length of the stroke to adjust the scale. And then they're going to be a little sloppy, so you can come back in and you can adjust and tweak them to try to make them fit better. Uh, stepping ahead, you can see something like that. And uh, this is what that would look like with way too bright of a light turned onto it. Here's an example of hair cards. And you can see you can just kind of draw those on. You can also use the proportional editing to like move big chunks of them around at once. Now I want to show how you can use mesh draw in combination with modifiers and geometry nodes. So here I have a tileable mesh and I have a couple of modifiers on there that will repeat it 
uh, and shrink it at the same time. Remember, the mesh must stay within that zero to one range at all times. So basically I can create tiles with it. And you see if I draw out this really long stroke and it looks terrible because it's, it's being stretched so far, but then I can come back in and add the repetitions I need to get it looking pretty good. Same idea here, except for I'm only repeating the chain. The handle and the ball at the end are, are not being repeated. I'm using a geometry nodes network for that. And so I can quickly draw out a bunch of them of different lengths. And you can see what happens is I can adjust in the, the number of repetitions until it starts to look good. Now it's worth pointing out that since these are all different lengths, they're going to all want a different number of repetitions, but that's okay. You can kind of bake them out as you go and, and make as many as you need. And this donut um, kind of just does the exact same thing. And you can see I can dial in the repetitions that look good for this particular shot. If you add a little bit of twist, you end up with the ultimate donut. In this example, I'm using geometry nodes to make the curves for the mesh draw. And so I'm just making this ring of curves that all have random heights. And the point of this is I want to show that you can use geometry nodes to choose which mesh gets assigned to which curve. And so I'm going to use the height of the curve to decide that. So you can see that the tentacle is on the tallest curves, the snake is on the medium sized curves, and the flail is on the shortest curves. Okay, but I know what everybody's thinking about. How about the new hair curve system? Well, good news is it works. And to show that, let me come down here and make a monkey. Ah! Uh, you guys, I don't think Suzanne's been doing very well ever since everything changed in 2.8. You know, maybe we could lift her spirits by giving her a brand new hairdo. And yeah, so I can come in here, I can draw on some hairs and uh, assign those into the mesh draw and there we go. It's looking pretty. And all the brush tools work so you can scale, you can comb, use the snake hook and tweak everything around. My favorite being the snake hook, of course. But it does feel like if you're using the snake hook, probably should be using it on snakes, right? Yeah, okay, I'm liking that. Uh-huh, take care, Suzanne. So this last example, we're gonna make a tree using this brush set right here. And I want to show how you can stack multiple iterations of the mesh draw on top of one another. And what I mean by that is uh, we're going to start out small here and we're going to make just the stems and the leaves. And you notice that I'm building this inside that zero to one range because this thing itself is going to become a brush on the next iteration. So once I'm happy with that, I uh, move on to the next step and I can lay down kind of the base model for the, the branch that I'm going to make here. And now I use those stems and leaves that we made in the last uh, section and can start adding those on as their own brush. And once I'm happy with the branch, of course, then I move on to the tree trunk itself and a couple of bigger branches. And I can just start painting on those new branches that we made. And I will admit this is a very ugly looking tree, but I hope you get the idea. And that is Mesh Draw. It's available for free right now on Gumroad. I also have a longer video explaining how to use it, which is on my YouTube channel. Find links for both of those down below. Thank you for watching.